Hey guys, Tarek here. I'm a music photographer based out of Portland, Oregon. I've worked directly with electronic artists like Seven Lions, Rehab, and Phase One, just to name a few. In this Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I do when I'm editing a raw clip after shooting a festival or working with an artist. A raw clip is the unprocessed camera footage that a videographer captures while they're out shooting. With raw clips, you'll find that they haven't been color corrected, audio enhanced, or trimmed to eliminate unusable footage. In the same editing session, I'll also format my raw clip for mobile, so I can post it as a TikTok and an Instagram reel. To get started, I have my two sequences already set up. To add a sequence to your timeline, click New Item in your project window, and then click Sequence. The sequence preset that I normally choose is the DSLR 1080p at 24 frames per second. This is found in the folder titled Digital SLR. The sequence I titled Raw Clip has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, which is the standard aspect ratio for YouTube videos. I have some footage that I captured of EDM artist Rez in Canada already placed in the sequence. The mobile sequence has an aspect ratio of 9 by 16, which is the exact ratio needed for TikTok and IG Reels. For now, we'll leave the sequence empty. To check the aspect ratio of your sequence, make sure your timeline is selected, go up to Sequence, Sequence Settings. You'll see the aspect ratio next to Frame Size. Now the first thing I'll do is trim the unusable footage from the raw clip. In this example, the beginning of the video isn't needed, and at the very end of the clip she turns away, so I want to have it trimmed to just before that moment. I already have the trimmed raw clip on the timeline, but to do this you simply drag the ends of the clip until you only have the usable footage remaining. The next thing I'll do is add one of my LUTs onto the clip. LUTs stands for lookup table, which is a fancy way to say color correcting your footage. To do this, make sure the clip is selected and then click on Lumetri color. Then basic correction. In the drop down menu, click browse and then choose the cube file that has the LUT you're trying to add to your clip. This specific LUT has a cooler temperature, higher exposure, contrast, and saturation. And I raise the shadows to give the video a nice faded moody look. Now that the video is color corrected, what I'll usually do is add an audio transition at the start of the clip, more specifically the constant gain effect. This ensures that the video's full volume doesn't start right at the beginning of the clip. Instead, it eases its way to the full volume within the first second of the clip. This effect is found in the effects panel, audio transitions, crossfade, constant gain. Simply drag it to the start of the audio clip on the timeline. You can also extend the length of the effect if you'd like for the volume to ease in for longer. The last thing I'll do in this sequence is add an ending to the clip. This isn't really necessary and there's a ton of ways to do this. What I do is add my logo four times within the last seven frames of the clip. I accomplish this by zooming in towards the end of the clip and clicking Command Shift K on a Mac to cut through both the video and audio clip at the same time. I'll do this six times. I'll then remove every other clip, including audio, and replace it with my logo. If you hold down the Option key while dragging an asset on the timeline, it will duplicate it. This is how the end of the clip will look on the timeline, and this is how it will look in the video. Now we are ready to export the raw clip in order to optimize it for mobile. First, make sure the timeline is selected, and then go into File, Export, Media. Name the edited raw clip by selecting the output name, and you can choose where you want it to export to as well. Then click Export. Now double click in your project window and add the edited clip that you just exported. Before dragging the clip onto the timeline, make sure the sequence that has the correct aspect ratio for mobile is selected. Now when the clip and timeline have different sequence settings, this warning will appear. In this case, we want to keep the same existing settings. Of course, this means your clip won't fit correctly in the frame. To correct this, right or double click on the clip and select Scale to Frame Size. Now the full clip is featured in the frame, but I personally don't like to leave all the empty space. I want the main video to overlay a blurred out version of the same video. This will create a more immersive mobile experience. First, hold down the option key and drag to create a duplicate of the video and make sure that they're stacked on top of each other. Next, make sure the video towards the bottom is selected and go into effect controls to increase the size of it by increasing the scale value. Once it fills up the entire space, we'll want to blur it out. To do this, go into the effects panel and type in the word blur. 
and drag the Gaussian blur effect onto the bottom video clip. From here, while making sure the bottom clip is still highlighted, go back into the effect controls panel, select repeat edge pixels, and increase the blurriness to your liking. Once you export the video, this is how it will appear. I of course wish I could play the actual audio from the video, but due to copyright, you'll need to watch the video on my Instagram or my TikTok. If you found the tips in my raw clip editing process useful, please make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing as well for more editing videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching guys.